And good evening, and we're back again with Dan Walko. Now, Dan is one of those people that deals with cross-border investment decisions. And if you're one of the people that I deal with on a regular basis, or a couple of them to do today, Dan, and I'll go to Dan in a second, um, you live in the States, and you've got your Canadian RSPs, or your Canadian pension, or your Canadian stock brokerage account, and you want to leave it in Canada. You really think you want to leave some stuff in Canadian dollars and so on. Or you're an American, and you're living in Canada, and you've got an account down in the States, or 401k or your IRA is still down there, and the manager of, the, of your account has said, hey, we can't deal with you anymore, or we can hold it like this, but you can't buy anything. You can sell if you want, but you can't buy anything within the account, and this man has a solution. So welcome, Dan Walco. Thanks, David. And we've uh, sort of, this is sort of a continuation, and we're just going to rehash and rehash and rehash, because this is tax season. Yes. This is the year or time when everybody wants their reporting. This is when they got to get their T3s or T5s or 1099s or all that stuff. All that stuff has got to come in. It's got to be right, and they've got to know what to do with it. And what's really got me right now is the absolute uh, uh, the IRS and the Department of the Treasury are looking for better reporting on financial accounts. Like three times more than they wanted last year. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. If you had a TDF-90 last year, which is the form that you use to report your foreign bank accounts, last year you had to give them the name of the bank. Let's, let's pretend you had $110,000 in the Bank of Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. You'd say Bank of Nova Scotia, Country Canada, give them the account number, and put that you had between 100000 and a $1 million in the account. This year they want the name of the bank, they want its address, the branch address, they want the account number, they want your identification number, and they want to know exactly what the highest balance was during the year. Right. I think this all has to do with uh, some tightening up from about a year ago. If you recall, UBS come under severe fire. That's the Swiss. The U.S. Uh, yeah. US Swiss banking giant, uh, UBS. Um, and it, it, it's the American Tax Authority has been cracking down on offshore investments. You probably no doubt have read in recent press and so forth. And UBS, of course, was holding private accounts for American custom clients and managing them out of Switzerland. And two things, of course, one, there was the issue of tax avoidance or evasion, and of course the other one was they weren't registered to do business in the United States. So the bank itself, UBS, was this big, massive <coughs> Legal organization in Switzerland. I mean, how big was it? Was it in the top ten or top no, fifteen it's one banks? Of the biggest banks in the world. One yeah. of the biggest banks. So it's a really, a, really a big bank. Was operating and hadn't even bothered getting a license. Right. So they have uh, paid the price of of uh, um, a substan substantial portion. I, I forget what the penalties actually were. But this comes to a bigger issue, which goes to your issue about more tax reporting, in that. Um, the Obama administration carrying on uh, in recent weeks has um, challenged Switzerland directly about their secrecy laws. And there's been some modification by, by Switzerland basically, from what I understand, saying that we won't give you all the information on everybody we have, but if you or any other tax authority request information from us, we mm. will provide it. That's right. That's been going on now for years. Right. And as I told you last week, um, I was actually sitting in Haynes' office, the vice president of the Bank of Nova Scotia, and I shouldn't name this as clear as I am, but the Treasury, Depart U.S. Department of Treasury phoned, and they wanted details mm -hmm. of a Grand Cayman Island Bank of Nova Scotia account. Mm -hmm. And Haynes quite properly said, hey, no, 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 we can't do that. It's against the bank of, uh, against the banking laws of Grand Cayman mm -hmm. Islands. And they said, well, fine, as long as you don't give it to us, we're going to charge you $25,000 U.S. a day right. until you give us the information. And again, the statement was, well, how are you, you, know, how are you going to, we're just going to apply it against your branch in Miami. So three and a half million dollars later, I think it was only three million two hundred and fifty thousand U.S. dollars later, the Bank of Nova Scotia provided to the U.S. Department of Treasury all the details of that client that were specifically asked for. There's actually new legislation pending. Uh, it's up before Congress right now and has, has listed uh, um, various tax jurisdictions which are viewed as tax uh, avoidance areas. Uh, you know, the usual suspects come to mind, Jersey, Guernsey, 
Caymans. Vanatu. Sort of, you know. Well, in and, Vancouver. And this is, uh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, those are keep on. Here's. Well, just that it's, got, it's reared itself up here, and there was actually a protest in Guernsey and Jersey here this past week. And the uh, UK, of course, has been uh, accused of harboring tax evaders in Jersey and Guernsey. And the uh, British government's under severe pressure to open the uh, secrecy laws in Jersey and Guernsey. So I have to think if you have money offshore, if you've been doing this, it's time to straighten your life. You better find a tax attorney real quick. Yeah. Well, in, 19, in 2000, October 2000, we had a wonderful uh, 36 country money laundering conference here in Vancouver right. that I got to go to because Gary Bannerman and uh, uh, Stetson, the RCMP officer, uh, was, I, suddenly I can't remember his name, I apologize because I know him, um, and Shirley Stocker and so on, were yeah. put all this together. And it was a marvelous thing, 36 countries, and I got to sit in on all these high-level right. money laundering and what they were doing and what they were getting and what information was actually being released. And boy, there was nothing left to the imagination at that conference. Yeah. If you're trying to hide your money offshore, you don't do it. And then two years later, a Vancouver accountant named Jerome Schneider. Did you ever meet Name Jerome Schneider? I've never met him. No. Well, he had a beautiful office, just one of those really fancy executive offices, as opposed to where I work in my living room with piles of paper and stuff over there. Um, garbage at the front door type of stuff. Uh, he had a beautiful, gorgeous office downtown in uh, uh, Georgia. And... Um, they arrested him when he went to San Francisco for a vacation, arrested him as he came off the airplane, charged him with an innumerable number of offenses for aiding and abetting Americans to not report their offshore money. And he ended up um, getting, uh, he plea bargained himself down from a 99-year sentence to eight months and a $100,000 fine, which at that point wiped him out. And his plea bargain was he turned over 1,072 clients to the Department of Justice and the IRS. And my understanding is that the minimum fine that any of those 1,072 people got was $10,000. Well, interestingly enough, this is how this whole UBS thing blew up over the course of the last year. It was a, a disgruntled employee, basically. Of UBS. Of UBS. Yeah. Uh, basically send lists to the IRS, I guess, but he, it was a whistleblower. Yeah. In 1994 or 95, I don't remember the exact year, uh, there was a trust company in the Bahamas called Castle Rock, yeah, and it was owned by the Department of Treasury. And all the Americans were flocking to the Bahamas and opening up their offshore accounts, were walking into the bank, a secretive bank, which was owned by the Department of the Treasury, and they were all fined as well. So having offshore accounts doesn't make any yeah. sense to anybody. So what would you recommend from a tax point of view if somebody has some, had an offshore trust in... Turks or someplace like that, and it was, and you'd, you know, you put over a million or two million as your safety money, and now, now you're reckoning that, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get caught sooner or later. Uh, um, if you come, if you come to the voluntary, tax, voluntarily, voluntary disclosure, you, you basically, you still owe the tax on any earnings, back taxes, and so forth. You owe the tax, and you owe the interest, but you can get out of criminal prosecution, and you can get out of penalties. Right. And uh, Paul Giordardo, of course, is one of the people in town, uh, Giordardo, yeah. uh, Giordardi uh, Law Corporation. And uh, he and a couple of others. I had another fellow here today uh, just sitting right over there in the corner did his tax return, and they used a fellow in Toronto to do the same thing for the corporation and their employee and got away with like $100,000 worth of tax to pay but no penalties. Right. And since the penalties can be 200% of the tax yeah. or 200% of the amount of money that was hidden, it is really a good idea to come forward if there's any chance. And well, how they get caught? You get caught because of an ex-wife, an ex-girlfriend, an ex-boyfriend, an ex-lover, an ex-employee. Uh, a whistleblower, an employee. A whistleblower, somebody that you offended. Uh, it can just be, for instance, I know that in... in uh, somebody, and I don't know who it is, at Burnaby General Hospital mm -hmm. is very good at turning people in to the BC Medical Corporation mm -hmm. because people who are living in the States and still have BC Medical because they used to live here yeah. will come up to Vancouver and get medical procedures done. In one case it was a uh, kidney transplant. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody at that hospital is turning people in. They're 
finding out that they really are living in the States, turning them into BC Medical, and BC Medical goes after them and collects you know, 10, 15, 55, 110,000 dollars.